What's going on guys? So you know in the wireless backup camera space, there hasn't really been a lot going on. You know, I've done a lot of videos on Halo View systems as well as the Furion system that I have up here. They all work reasonably well, right? Your biggest limiting factor is really distance and weather and whether you're driving or not. But for the most part, they do the job they're designed to do. And you know, the longer the RV you have, of course, the more challenges you may have in terms of the signal reaching the truck from the camera. But for the most part, again, they, they work pretty well. You know, I'm always on the search for new and innovative technologies. And I have companies that reach out to me all the time asking me to review stuff. And you know, for the most part, I turn a lot of it down simply because it's not too relevant or there are so many different variations of that specific type of technology that it's hard to review every single one of them because they all pretty much are the same until now so the folks over at halo view reached out to me and they have something that's kind of different and uh, it's something I think that you'll definitely be interested in especially if you tow a longer fifth wheel hang tight All right, so you know it's important and you know it's fancy when it has its own rugged weatherproof case complete with pressure release. You know, this is just pretty cool when you get a package that's packaged like this. And the folks at Halo View reached out to me a couple of weeks ago and they said, you know what, we have this really new innovative piece of technology that I think your viewers would enjoy. And at first, I was skeptical because the folks at Halo View produce a lot of camera systems and I wasn't really interested in reviewing another camera system. I've done several systems from them as well as some of the, the systems that compete against them like Furion and other systems that are on the market. But this isn't that. This was so unique that I felt it absolutely deserved a chance to be shown to you all and basically give you guys an opportunity to see what the folks at Halo View have been working on. So I'm going to open this case up. And again, they've kind of went overboard on the packaging. Uh, that being said, though, you know, the system you're about to see in here is not inexpensive. So a lot of folks would say, you know, for what you're paying, you might as well put it in something like this just to protect it in route. Anyways, let's flip this thing up and take a look at it. So what you're looking at is the Halo View Sense Wireless Advanced Driving Assistance System, or WADAS, I think. It's written right here. And... This is essentially a blind spot notification system whenever you plan on hauling a large fifth wheel, just like the Brookstone we have here. Now, you're probably not unfamiliar with this technology because Ford actually introduced a version of trailer blind spot detection in some of their newer trucks. And it basically detects what might be taking place or when a vehicle is approaching you from a blind spot to your trailer. But the problem with the Ford system is it only goes back like 20 feet. So if you have a 20 foot trailer, you're okay. But I have a 42 foot trailer right here. And this extends much, much further back off of the truck than what the Ford system will work with. So therefore I can't use it and I can't trust it even if it's turned on. So they tell you not to use it with trailers longer than like 20 feet long, something like that. I don't know the exact specs. But the Halo View system is very unique. It's unique in the sense, you get it, sense, that it is completely, well, I say completely wireless and you see all these wires right here, but it's wireless from the perspective of having to run anything from the trailer to the truck or power to the actual setup because it's broken down into a bunch of really creative components. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and unbox this in real time so you guys can kind of understand what you get in this packaging and specifically what each component does. So first of all, I'm gonna take out the two millimeter wave radar sensors that are super cool. So these are nice because they're magnetic. They can either magnetically attach to the rear bumper of your RV, or if you have any steel component on the back that is of the proper height off the ground. If you don't, you get these really cool magnetic plates. They attach to your RV with some really, really strong 3M VHB adhesive, and it gives you this mounting platform that attached to the back or that these can attach to magnetically to your RV, which is really nice. Now, I know a lot of folks are going to talk about theft deterrent and, you know, what's there to prevent someone from taking this. You know, there is possibly a chance that someone could steal these off the back of your RV, so just be aware of that. I'm not going to say that they made this specifically designed to prevent someone from stealing it, but if they steal a component, it doesn't mean they're going to have the rest of it to make it work. It would just be a really big inconvenience for whoever they stole it from. All right, so you have these two components here. You have the plates. Let me go ahead and magnetically attach another one right there. 
This is what would attach to the back of your RV. But you also have these. Now, if you check this out, that is a smart battery. So you get two more of these plates. So let's just say you mount them on the back of your RV, one above the other, or one maybe underneath. These also magnetically attach. You get two of those plates right here. And then this other smart battery attaches to that plate. And these are incredibly strong magnets, so I don't think there is any risk of any of this stuff falling off of these magnets, even under the most jarring conditions. Be sure you don't have any dust or, you know, grime or dirt in between here. I definitely wiped down the magnetic pad and the steel pad before you, you know, take off on a long adventurous trip. But yeah, very, very sturdy, very strong there. Here is the sense module, or basically the communication piece that you have up front in your vehicle. And this would rest in the center of your dash. And then you have these which connect to them. So they have this little plug. The plugs go in on the side right here on each side. You set this in the center of your dash and then these have three M adhesive on them and you run these to the side pillars of your vehicle, one on each side, to indicate what side a vehicle might be approaching on. And you have two of those. So all of this wirelessly communicates with this stuff right here. And then you have a charging plug right here. So this charging plug actually recharges your smart batteries, which is pretty cool. Basically everything that you would need for either a hardwire installation or a wireless installation. And when I say hardwire, I mean hardwire in the sense of instead of using the batteries, you can actually connect these to the power coming off the back lights of your RV so you don't have to recharge the battery packs. But if for some reason you don't feel comfortable using these or you don't want to have to wire into the lighting, you simply can use the smart batteries and you can purchase more of these so you have the ability to constantly have a power source for your sensors whenever you are out and about. But my best recommendation would be to simply get the two and then charge these up whenever you're camping and then before you leave just take these out put them in place and get these things charging as well. So you got all your power cords and again that would be if you're hardwiring these to your RV. All this stuff right here is for charging two batteries off of one outlet adapter right here and then you have a little cable right here which looks like an extension cable for one of these. And then you have the power for the brain right here. And the power is a USB-C jack on the bottom of the brain. Very cool. You also get a standard 12 volt cigarette lighter style charger right here or plug to power this up as well. And you get a bag with a tape measure that actually allows you to measure the correct height off the ground that you need to uh, actually mount these on the back of your RV. You also have an Allen key in here as well. And this is gonna to be to tighten down the mount right here to prevent these from moving around. You also have this really cool tool that will provide you the correct angle in terms of degrees from the camera that you need to mount these on the back of your RV. So you see these little grooves right here that locks into the groove. So whenever you take this out to the back of your RV, you want them to be at a 50 degree angle you'd mount this so this is angled at 50 degrees to the side of your RV. And that's the correct angle to be able to kind of broadcast wherever a vehicle might be passing you. And you can do it on both sides the same way. So that's very cool. I don't know if we're gonna have time to take the RV out in this specific video. Plus my father's RV is parked right in front of me and yeah, I don't have the keys to it. So, but what I do have the time to do is to get all of this connected and put in place and show you how it's done. It's like you have some extra, oh, these are just your wire ties. So you basically can secure everything down and you don't have to worry about your uh, cable just being loose on the dash. And it gives you a little picking tool right there to help you pry up panels to tuck the wiring for this under the dash. So whenever you hook up these little directional arrow indicators, they're not just showing everywhere. Very, very cool. And I did find the other extension. So you have one extension here, and then the other extension is right here. All right, let's go ahead and get this thing installed so I can show you how it works. And I may be able to demonstrate it out here, but we'll find out. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is clean a spot to be able to mount these little steel magnetic plates to, uh, the adhesive side at least. And it says I need to be between 50 and 80 centimeters off of the ground. 
should be pretty easy. I think that's gonna give you a wide enough uh, range so you can attach them to most of the RVs you have. And it's nice that you have your nifty little tape measure that they provide you. Okay, so 50 is right there and 80 is way up here. Don't need to be at 80, but I certainly can put them right here, which would be perfect uh, in terms of aligning it to where they tell you to. So I just need to clean this area off a little bit I'm gonna go ahead and do the same on the other side. And something else that's nice is the back of the sensors actually tell you specifically what side it goes on. So I have the left and right sensor, this being the right side. I will position this sensor right here. And if for some reason they have that backwards or my right and left is confused, I can easily change it back around. So you have power pair, but the weird thing is is that the Halo View logo is opposite to the text that's on it, so that's kind of confusing. Uh, what side is the right side up is the question. I would imagine the Halo View logo would go right side up, but then it would make your power and pairing button Okay, so I looked at the instructions and it would appear as if the antenna is supposed to be facing in. So I'm going to kind of put that here. I'll make it a bit flush with the top. I actually prefer that. And I'm going to turn this mount around because I want the I want that part to be facing up. Now let me go grab the tool so I can put it in the slot here and I can measure the correct angle. Okay. So I have their little tool here. So I can make sure this is at the correct angle. I want it to be at 50 degrees, and then they give you this interesting little bubble level, which can go on top, and you want to make sure it's all leveled out properly. And you have it positioned back exactly at 50 degrees. Okay, so now I'm going to simply tighten it down right here, and that will secure it in place. Okay, and they say you can actually use the case to make sure you're right at the 50 degree mark by putting the case underneath it. But I think we are about as good as we're going to get on this side. Let's go ahead and get the other side put in place. Okay, that's just about perfect. This side was a little easier than the other side. Now, the challenge I see here is as precise as you have to be with this little bubble level, um, you know, when you do hit bumps, it is likely that this will probably shift slightly out of position. So you might want to come back and check it every now and then when you go camping. All right. And then, see, it'll fit underneath. So part of me is saying, you know what, maybe we should just mount this underneath. It'll be a little bit more concealed that way. Okay, there we go. And you know, it blends in pretty well. It's actually relatively concealed considering, you know, they protrude off the back about five inches. And then the battery pack is mounted on the side of the frame rail right there, or at least a portion coming back out to the bumper. That is pretty cool. Now, what would be really nice is, and it's something worth testing, once you're done with all this, if there's a way to possibly use these as backup sensors. I don't think there is because I don't think there's any indicator of how far or close something might be to the back of the RV. It's basically if you're in the path of what this is specifically sensing for, it's going to notify you. It's not going to be like a weaker to stronger notification. But that is certainly something I think the folks at Halo View should integrate into this. Maybe some type of a display up front that lets you know how far away you are from something and you can use these as backup sensors. I think that would be phenomenal. So big, big suggestion to the folks at Halo View. Also make these compatible with a backup sensing system so you have the ability to see how far or close you are from something. Okay, so we are all done with the backside 
portion of this connection. You just don't have to do anything else. You magnetically attach the sensor, magnetically attach the batteries, plug the two in, and you're pretty much done with what you have to do from the backside here. You know, this entire process, if I hadn't been filming, probably would have taken five minutes or less. It's that quick to put all of this on, not just one side. Next, we just have to hop inside the truck and do the interior portion. Okay, so this is essentially what it looks like once it's connected. You have both your left and your right indicators. These would mount inside of the vehicle on the left or right side of the vehicle. You have your little display right here. Your display indicates several things, such as the current speed you're traveling, as well as the minimum alert speed. The minimum alert speed is how fast you have to be going for the system to operate. Basically, you can set it so if you're going under a certain speed, it's not going to go off on you, such as if you're driving around an RV park or a parking lot where you're going to be passing by things or things will be in close proximity and you don't want the system to constantly go off. Very cool. And because this is battery powered, I like the fact that everything is module. You don't need to hardwire anything in. You can simply use it when you want to use it. For folks like myself that have tons of things on the dash already, the last thing I want is another permanently mounted you know, piece of equipment up there that I have to find a place to wire it. But because you don't have to do that here, it just it works really well. It makes it a very, very convenient tool. Had I needed to wire this into the actual truck or the RV, I probably wouldn't have used it. I probably wouldn't have put this on simply because it's just another thing that I'd then have to wire into the vehicle. And I'm just, you know, I, I'm, honestly, I just don't want anything else wired in if I can avoid it. So I love the fact that it's completely module. I love the fact that it comes with this really cool case. Next time we take the fifth wheel out, I'm gonna be demonstrating the system because I wanna be able to show you guys how it works as well. Because something to keep in mind is because I'm back here right now, it's gonna detect all of this, it's gonna detect all of that, and uh, it'll constantly have the thing beeping at me. Oftentimes the number one biggest objection to RVing is the fact that you have to tow something huge down the road through cities in traffic and anything that a manufacturer can create that can make that a little bit less stressful, uh, make you feel a little bit more confident, I think is important. So very interested in testing this thing out and seeing how it works. Uh, today was pretty much the overview and the installation video. Next time we get an opportunity to take the RV out, we'll show you how it works on the road. Anyways, guys, I will put a link to this in the description of the video. If you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.